Hi, my name is Lana Cantu, and welcome to True Sound. We'll be talking about the significance of John 9, 1 through 7. If you're like me and grew up in the church, you've probably heard the story about Jesus healing the blind man with mud and spit. And if you haven't, you will today. I don't know about you, but the whole like mud and spit on an eye kind of grossed me out. I mean, when I first heard this, I was still a little girl being like, ew, boys. I was definitely taken aback when I first heard. Jesus spit in the ground, made mud, and put it on the man's eyes. He healed a blind man with his spit? Yep. I... Uh... Yeah, anyways, throughout the years of my little life, I heard the story several times and grew to view it as... Oh yeah, the story about the blind man and, and the mud and the saliva. Cool. But one morning, I came downstairs and got myself some breakfast. Mama was sitting in her recliner, reading her devotional, The Rock, the Road, and the Rabbi by Kathy Lee Gifford, which is what this video is based off of, so go and check it out. I sat down at the table, eating my eggs, when Mama started to read aloud. And what she said really changed the way I thought of the story. It was explained in a way that I never heard before, and I thought it was awesome. Let's take a look at the passage, John 9, 1-7. As he passed by, he saw a man blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he would be born blind? Back then, they believed that a person born blind was a result of his parents' sin or his own sin. That I guess he would do in the future? I guess? Jesus answered, it was neither that this man sinned nor his parents, but it was so that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me, as long as it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay, or mud, of the spittle, and applied the clay to his eyes, and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam. So he went away and washed, and came back seeing. All right, let's break this down. This man was born blind, and being blind from birth is called congenital blindness. Yeah, this is gonna get a bit sciencey, so strap in. Congenital blindness is a birth defect, inherited result of an infection during pregnancy, or simply a defect between the brain and the eye. Regardless of the cause, this baby's genetics isn't gonna let him see the light of day, but perhaps the light of the world will. Jesus had not only healed the blind man's spirit, he also healed his genetic code. One way to get DNA is through saliva, you know, quick cotton swab of the cheek. When Jesus used his spit, he transferred his perfect DNA into the blind man, curing the genetic defect. And that's not all. This miracle also proved the legitimacy of Jesus being God's rightful heir. In the Babylonian Talmud, basically a rule book for the Jews, there is a story where one is unsure whether or not another is the firstborn. I am certain that this man is firstborn, he said to him. Whence do you know this? The other replied to him. Because when people came to his father, he used to say to them, Go to my son Shekath, help me, who was firstborn and his spittle heals. There is a tradition that the spittle of the firstborn of a father is healing, but that of the firstborn of a mother is not healing. Jesus, however, didn't just restore or heal some ailing man's sight. He gave it to somebody who never had it at all. The blind man was healed supernaturally. And not, not like that. Jesus is God's son because only the father's firstborn's saliva would be able to do such a miracle. So with his perfect DNA and God's firstborn status in his spit, Jesus was able to open the eyes of the blind. I hope this devotional has given you some more insight into this story. Have an awesome stellar and fruit salad day. See you next time. Her nose hurts, people. Her nose hurts. <laughs>